Hello? Hi, Pat. Hey, it's Nate. I'm just... Yeah, so this guy's Nate. from... He's four years younger than us. He's from Michigan, um, went to Grand Valley. He's their digital asset specialist. So I would think... Okay. My, my guess is, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of experience or anything, so it probably means he's just the level one gatekeeper, would be my guess, because there's no way one person. But then again, they are pretty behind. They don't use any, so we'll chat with them. But that's just my guess is before, uh, beforehand, so. Okay. Yeah, he piqued my interest when he said he was from Grand Valley. Yeah. I see that the strip LV didn't keep your interest very long. Right? So. No, I just I, I started seeing all the emails coming in. And I was like, yeah, since yeah. Pat and every since you were on there, I was like, I might as well just no. get, get to work. That was that was a complete waste of time. It's funny though. So. Patrick, hello, Ned. Hello. Hi, James. How you guys doing? Okay. Gordon Food Service. And Nate, Nate are you the presenter? No. Okay. No. Okay. Hello. James. Yo. Oh, I'm sorry, I got off the computer. I don't know if they told you yet. Uh, so he's approximately 25. He's a digital asset specialist. Um, okay. Doesn't have a ton of experience within them, and their site is a bit behind probably when it comes down to these things. But obviously this is one of those cases where total spending, they could have a ton, but their online game's not caught up yet. So we'll want to get as deep as we can into their purchasing process and cycle because his title is digital asset specialist. So. Okay. Well, I'm at their site. So is it, is it e-commerce or is it, uh, is it just information? It looks like there's uh, store. Let me see about it. I mean, to me, we've spoken to a few of the other chains like this. It sounds like they're trying to transition to the online or using it as a okay. platform to get more people to come in the store. One of the two, but obviously they're okay. they're, they're not going to be hurting on affording wise. So. Okay. 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 And I am going to throw in, I am going to be showing the DCI real quick on the red, too, just to pretty shot. My guess is he's not going to be very deep, so. All right, we'll okay. See some. Someone's on this. No problem. And then 3 o'clock today, is that the meeting with the, um, with the interns? What's up? Three o'clock today, we've got a meeting. Is that with the intern? Well, it looks like I got, uh, hang on, Toyota Irvine, is, uh, Fairchild is one. Fairchild is tentative, so they haven't confirmed yet, so. Okay, so Fiddler Creek is one, Toyota Irvine is two, and then uh, it looked like there was. Um, we got someone uh, hopping on, give them a second. Okay, got it, okay. Hi, this is Matt. Hello. Hello. Hi, this is James. Uh, who, who's on? Um, who did we just pick up here? Hang on. This is Matt Oster from Gordon Fruit Service. Okay, great. Hey, Matt, how are you? Good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. So, 
Um, are you going to have anyone else joining, it, uh, joining us, or are you uh, solo? I am it, although my go-to meeting is a little deceptive because uh, I occasionally have to use one of our AA's accounts, and that's why the okay. name is a little different than mine on there. Okay. So okay, no I problem. I will be the only one from GFS, though. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you for um, spending a couple minutes with us today. Uh, besides myself, I've got my colleague, uh, Patrick, uh, on the line also, and he's going to be um, taking you through the demonstration. Okay, don't know great. Had, don't know if you had a chance to look at our website, but before we give our presentation, we always like to know a little bit more about you and your experience with uh, web analytics tools. So uh, obviously we've got the website. Uh, can you see the website? Or, uh, can you see the um, presentational screen? Yep. Okay, You've just good. got the GFS homepage on there, right? Yeah, so maybe you just can fill in the blanks a little about GFS and then talk about your web tools experience. Sure. So just giving you a little bit of background, um, Gordon Food Service is a broadline food service distributor um, out kind of here in the Midwest and also um, south in Florida and kind of around that area as well. Main competitors are Cisco, U.S. Food Service, um, companies like that. Specific to my role, uh, my formal title is the Digital Asset Specialist. And uh, what I do is I work with a lot of our media assets and then also our, some of our internal and external websites. I'm also dealing with some of our Google Analytics and running reports on that. So that's a bit of a background on some of the things that I do. Okay. And then uh, web, web experience? Web tools? I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I, I couldn't hear the last part. Um, your experience with web tools? You said Google Analytics. Google Analytics. Okay, I'm sorry, I, yep. it kind of broke on me here, so cool. Well, um, on that note, uh, Patrick's going to take you through a little demonstration, and uh, we will circle back with some uh, Q&A period and then see where to go from there. Okay, great. Great, Matt, my name is uh, Patrick, how are you? Great, how are you? Good. Hey, what part of the Midwest, remind me, are you guys in Michigan, Gordon's Food Services, uh, the Command Central, or? Yeah, we're right out in uh, Grand Rapids, Wyoming, Michigan. Oh, okay. I think you guys are out in California, aren't you? We're in La Jolla. We have an office in Ann Arbor, and I'm from Michigan. I went to Michigan State and lived there for 20-plus years, so pretty familiar with the area. So. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, yeah, on that note, we're going to introduce, uh, long story short, our company, um, what we're going to be showing you is an advanced website intelligence tool. Um, the step one of what we do to differentiate from what you currently use. Um, Google Analytics, similar products, what they've done throughout history and analytics is if I'm on your website right now and let's say I go to the next, a different page, they're going to create one record of data when I go from, you know, when I load a new page, when I click a new page, that's when you're going to get more data to start drilling, getting reports from, and understanding your visitors' online experience. Right, so um, okay. what we're doing that's a big differentiator, our uh, proprietary technology is the first technology that stores the entire online experience as an individual data record. What that means is if I'm on your site here and I type my name, pre-submit, I type information in here, every keystroke I type, every mouse movement, every time I select a specific word on your website, every time I play a video, they're all being stored as separate records. So that lets you guys dig it, dig and you know get a lot deeper to know things like how many people have been an inch under the play button, click their mouse three times to see if we had you know a usability error on our site. So from a capability standpoint, that's the long story short is um, we're storing all that information to get much deeper insight. The other end of that, the other end of that coin is through that uh, storing everything, we're also able to replay it in a video format. So this example here is would be your company's view of your actual website traffic that's integrated into all of our, you know, advanced analytics and our general dashboard. So I'm going to let it play for a second just to answer questions that usually come up about what we store. Okay. So this would just be an example of 
um, another company's website and just tracking what the movements are that the end user is going through. Yeah, exactly. This would, I mean, potentially on your, so you add one line of script on your site. And yeah, the, the main uh, diff, the main thing to notice, I guess, when we say movements is it plays a big role in just filling, um, you know, what they're typing is an individual movement on top of the actual mouse movement, et cetera. So. Okay. All right. So that example there, um, the button I click here, usability-wise, we can pause the recordings, play them. You can play them faster and slower. You can also click the button on the bottom right, and what this does is it replays it from the exact eyes of your customer, meaning the device or resolution they're playing from. That's what that expands to. So I'm going to, in the okay. case of a mobile phone, this next screen I'm going to show you is uh, we're, we're able to go deep enough to store the finger movements on a mobile phone. So I know a lot of companies' biggest pain point right now is understanding how to adjust their site for mobile and, you know, how to still obtain their objectives. So. so what you're seeing there is the finger engagement directly. These are stored as data aside from being able to see everything as it happens. And, of course, that just shows that, you know, if someone is rotating their phone as well, everything is taken accounted for, it's stored as a record to say what percent of people are viewing our site this way, and it's all strategically integrated to have the first uh, playable data record in every case. You can play and see what happens individually. So. Okay. So that's the, uh, you know, other than this, uh, are, let me ask you, do you use Google Analytics much? Or, you said you compile reports. Do you dig around much, or do you just kind of run a report once a month to get some broad overview stats? Um, depend, we'll go through, and based on our different sites, I mean, we'll look at usability from, like, say, our sales forces on one of our internal sites. We'll look at content and see um, what's actually being used. And, yeah, we'll dig into it a bit and just kind of, beyond just simple reporting, look at what the trends are. Okay, so that is you. You personally are involved in that world as well? You're pretty hands-on? And... Yeah. Um, our team, I'm on our web marketing team, and that's one of my roles, but we also have other individuals who are looking at reports as well. Okay, great. Yeah, so next thing, so this was a couple example links, you know, bordering uh, capabilities. I'm just going to show you a real uh, two-minute example of, you know, in comparison to what you're used to using, where the step one would be for uh, practical use. Okay. So this example here, we're go, just going to take a look at um, entry domains on a website. You know, you, you usually get data. All of our data has a pretty significant difference. Do you want to dig down into a segment as opposed to just seeing a number? We have it broken down. Um, I'm going to guess, Matthew, are you you're familiar with the terms uh, session and page and the differentiations on web traffic? Yep. Okay. So here's a session by session view by default. So it's a panoramic view because we're storing a thousand times as much data as Google Analytics and traditional analytics. We're allowed to uh, or we're able to customize engagement percentage is an example uh, of an analytic that we go company by company for what matters the most to understand for people, you know, if you wanted to interact with your site more, that can be defined by how much they go to your primary call to action. It can be defined by how much they're, you know, going to multiple links. But the point is that we're not over flooding you with data. We just chose the five or six most important analytics in each view, but you can dig deeply from step one all the way into each intercession. I mentioned the session view because okay. so, so we chose this segment here. We chose a specific segment. Um, this by default is by session. So this is how, you know, session visit, what the default is within analytics. What we're able to do from this view is if we click page view, it breaks down the exact same, uh, breaks down the exact same information so it's on a page by page basis. So yeah, I'm, I jump in my testing environment here to show you a couple of things that haven't been released. I'll give it a second. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Just, uh, <clears throat> I'll go to our main module if this is giving me problems. But the point, the point of this was that you can go from session-specific view, you click on customer view, and you have the same information split up by customers. So in this segment here, we see 266 separate customers. The sessions are obviously going to be a higher view because there's multiple sessions per customer. So you can seamlessly go from page so view. To read. 
just to read back, so that's more of the individual customer session and what specifically they've been looking at, and then you can go more to an aggregate top-level view, correct? Correct. Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, and this customer, I mean, it, it's just a different definition than when you're aggregating something by session or by page. So it all depends if you're looking for usability, okay. you might want to go by page. If you want to look at customer life cycle and average retention rate, you go by customer. So. Okay. Okay. Um, a, just a real quick skim. I mean, we, we have all the, you know, you can, you can trim the data down as much as you want. We have customized tagging, segmentation systems to say if someone clicks on uh, – Someone's been to my site five times and has almost filled out their information. The sixth time they come on the page, you can have a pop-up that says, only for that segment of traffic, you know, you would you like to complete your information? That's a pretty, uh, pretty okay. simple example there. So we can, our whole intelligence system, aside from the data, the aggregation, and the videos, can basically control and manipulate your site to push any content the way that's, you know, most uh, profitable to your company. Okay. What are some of the other examples of that? Some other examples of that? Oh, yeah. Um, another, yep. exam another example to give you, uh, in our case, from a banking perspective, the link I have. Another example here, what I showed you, uh, our default demo that we show is, for a banking site that chooses, if someone makes uh, multiple choices for what their investable assets are, let's say you start at a higher number, then you choose a lower number next. Because we're storing and differentiating those, what we set up is a system that says, automatically upsell this customer um, next month when he visited your website, because we know that if someone you know, is shopping a food menu and chooses a higher order and switches to the lower, you probably have the money in your pocket to be able to go that next level. I gotcha. So that's uh, so that th this is stuff that's all going to be customized on your personal ROI conversion goals. You know, like we said, we'll run through uh, we run through the top level overview, but after that, we'll I'll stop for a few minutes. We'll talk about a lot more practical applicabilities for you guys then. So. Okay. Cool. So from here, uh, the last detail to show you from the depth level. So here we're going session page or customer. From here, you can play the videos. Uh, Let's see if there's an example. You can play the videos directly from this page to see what happened, or what you can do is you can click View Details on any individual session. And what that does is, uh, I'm going to open up a forced one I have that has more history. So what this does is from this view, it opens up the history of any individual customer from one dashboard. So what this is, is if you have a customer that either, you know, is a partner or a client who is a very valuable lifetime customer, you can click through their history and understand all their past sessions from one view. Okay. Does that make sense, Matthew? Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, you have this view, you can go around. So this can also be used on the customer servicing element or the internal training. Um, because if you already have the information for customers, you know, whatever CRM you guys are using, we can integrate all that data so you can have a record to have a lot of non-analytics-based people take a look common sense and understand, you know, the life cycle and the, whether it's dissatisfaction indicators or ways to make your website experience better, you know, on a customer-by-customer -customer basis. Okay. And the other point here is, uh, like every every module within our system, we went out of our way to put as much. So you so because all of these records are also data records, you can customize the information you want to supplement in each case. You can also uh, create tags. And are, are you do you, do you guys use tagging currently, Matthew, for your uh, to monitor traffic and just kind of segment people? Or? Yeah, we have different segments built out. Okay. So you have different segments built out. I'm not going to dig too deep, but we do have an integrated tagging system as well. And um, like everything else in our product is the big differentiator, you can go a lot deeper to define those tags because if we're storing mouse movement and hesitation and typing speed and, you know, key entry, you, you'll be able to define something such as, I want to create a tag if someone pauses for five seconds before making a purchase on my site, I'm going to tag that visitor, similar visitors, and then I can 
then I can look at those sessions individually or aggregate the other trends, you know, consistent with those type of visitors. So we just have our tagging system. Okay. So we have our tagging system set by color. So in every other uh, view you see here, we have those tags labeled. So it just makes things a lot easier for you guys to be able to manage your traffic. So I gotcha. I'm going to show you uh, one more one more module introduce capability. Then we can uh, take a pause, of course, and chat about practical applicability. So uh, wanted to ask: Do you guys use conversion funnels too, Matt? Is that something you have your uh, hands uh, pretty full on the analytics under? I'm sorry, what was that again? Are you familiar with our conversion funnels? Do you guys use them internally? For... Not in my area. I don't think we've necessarily built out too many of those yet. Okay, but you understand the general concept of, you know, the path of what, what that entails? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the main differentiator, as you can guess, is uh, conversion funnels if you're looking at processes of your site. Um, Usually they give you, you know, you're trying to find the abandoned customers and trying to reduce that number or abandoned people who completed the goal of your website. You, traditionally, you'll get a number. You'll say, okay, great. On my site, we have, uh, out of the people who enter the page, 60% of them either have a login already or create a new one. Let's see what people are doing who have not In that case, what happens a lot of times, you'll just see those numbers, but you kind of have to go back to the drawing board on the marketing end to understand how to solve the problem. You're just getting the data reported. With our software, the big differentiator is you can dig into each of those abandoned customers and view their sessions individually as well. So in this case, uh, I'm going to give you a real practical scenario we used internally. In this case, we wanted to take a look at um, some of our abandoned website traffic. We're able to get the answer of why did this person leave very straightforward because uh, what's loading here is we had an internal website error on our site. So in your guys' case, you know, if someone didn't do something you wanted, our tech guys told me there's no problem. It was definitely your guys' end on the marketing end. Of course, the marketing guys, you know, can't really refute that statement. So I can take a look myself and say, okay, we have a website error. Let's look up the instance where that was created. I'm going to see it exactly as it is. So that's kind of proof to justify, you know, what's the problem. And, of course, right. in most cases, it's going to be to determine where a struggle point is. If you have an icon that looks clickable and isn't, you know, that kind of stuff. So, Okay. And uh, other than that, I'm just going to preview this uh, section as well because this is also a uh, unique technology um, in our company internally is um, you also have the ability to view live traffic in segments. So what this is, we've showed you all these individual customer views. This is if you, pe if you had five total people on your website, you would be able to see what they're doing actively, get focus on any individual uh, customer or segment of traffic, have a lot of built-in engagement, such as being able to chat with them directly, being able to customer service them um, as they're scanning your site. And this is our first ever ability on the end of this doesn't require any local download. You can say, I want to see all of my okay. traffic who's current login customer. So that's the uh, long story short there of, uh, you know, that depends on internal uses to make the most of that. Right. That's pretty cool. you have any questions at this point, Matthew, or? No, I think it's all making pretty good sense so far, but I'll let you know if I have any questions as we keep going through. Great. Um, I'm just going to show you our other, we're not going to dive too deep in here either, but um, you mentioned a couple of your customers, or a couple of your competitors. Can you uh, re-reference them? Um, like Cisco would be one of them, or Is... U.S. Food Service. Uh, those are two of the main ones that are up there. Do you know either of their websites off the top of your head, or...? Um, I think Cisco is just Cisco.com. You're talking about CISCO Cisco? I'm assuming you're talking about a different Cisco, right? Nope. This one is SYS. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say I didn't <laughs> no, think not, of Cisco the, being uh, a competitor with you guys. So I was a bit confused. So. <laughs> no, we're not in that industry. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say Cisco's really branched out now. That's pretty crazy. But, uh. We have built into our analytics what we call uh, complete complete competitive intelligence. What this is is um, okay. so we have a we have a unique website index. Um, the first one that captures every website on the internet. Because a uh, long story short, Google being the other mainstream indexes you're used to, 
fight, sites have to fight to get their attention and to get indexed to be searchable. Sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it takes two months, etc. Um, they're just assuming they're going to get all the, anyone who has significant traffic, they figure they're going to be picked up. Our database, right. our database is a much larger one. It's approximately 180 million websites. Google's estimated around 30. So what we're able to do is we store competitive intelligence on, you know, the traffic rank, social media usage, performance of every site on the Internet. So we package it for a company like yours to potentially be able to add a competitor and monitor them directly. Okay. I'm going to give you a more complete example of a what a deliverable looks like on that end. So, um, one second, please. Okay. So, that, so the common sense usage here would be you guys would say, hey, I want to take a look at these three competitors. We would monitor their traffic ramp. Let's say this is on a weekly basis. You monitor their traffic consistently, and you'd say, hey, my competitor just had a 30% shoot in traffic in the last week. Then you see, oh, look, they just had 80 million more Facebook likes. Those two things could be correlated. Let's take a closer look. Oh, look, they had a change in a sales headline. They had a change in technologies used. So the point of this is automated awareness into what your competitors are doing to make sure you're never left behind, whether it's a new technology, you know, or a new content strategy. So. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Matthew, on the top level? So, uh so the sales headline is really just tracking kind of more of their news and events? Well, content, you know, if you, it, yeah. It's correlated. Yeah, anything oh, on the ahead. site. Anything on the site. I don't know how technical you are. Um, within, anything within the source code. So if you guys have your headline, for instance, um, in a specific tag that's usually where it is on your site, you'd be able to check and just, you know, the same thing that Google does, run a robot down the site and update that information on a case-by-case -case basis, so. Okay. So, uh, yeah, at this point, do you do anything, do you guys do anything on that world? Do you guys use any tools such as Compete or anything else on the competitive intelligence standpoint? Or is that, uh, do you guys, do you know Matthew? Or? No, I'm not aware of any uh, vendor that we're using for that thus far. Is that something that you directly have much uh, interest in, or are you more hardcore in the analytics world? I don't know how broad of a scope the digital assets, as you mentioned, uh, covers internally. So, <laughs> oh, our our department kind of <laughs> flutters around depending on what the business needs. Um, but I would say that just in terms of analytics, we're always interested in more data and how we can better leverage our um, web properties. So getting more data to look at it is always beneficial for us. Yep. Uh, do you have any other questions at this time for, you know, whether it's use Cuddy or take a closer look at any individual module? Or? Do you guys have, like, a PDF takeaway of some of this stuff? Yeah, we, we kind of a handout or something like that. Oh, you're, you know, I, I thought you were talking about built internally. <laughs> you're talking about something to um, send you to summarize what we do, right? Yeah, yeah, Just absolutely. So I can do a recap. James, if you want to... Yeah, I uh, think in terms of what you guys have... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Matt. Keep going. I was just going to say, I think in terms of what you've gone over and regarding the presentation, I think that gives a really good high-level overview. Um, and just being able to recap it, I think, would be helpful. So... Okay. We've got links and some other stuff we can send you to um, give you an overview of the presentation. So I just want to jump in for a second. Um, uh, well, first, I guess, do you have any more technical questions? No, I think I'm pretty much set in terms of the technical questions and also the overview that you guys gave of the system. Okay, got it. Okay. So um, just help me understand your organization a little bit. Um, everybody we work with is a little bit different. Are you are you guys more vertical? In other words, did you collect the data and... Um, uh, you know, kind of give an overview to maybe the VP above you and, and make a decision, or is it more horizontal where you, you, you get a group buy-in and you um, sort of get feedback and sort of assess where to go from there? How, how do you guys normally deploy new technology? Mm, I would say that it's more vertical. Okay, okay. And um, we, always, um, we always ask for, you know, kind of a general uh, idea of, you know, for some folks it's I get it and I see where it would make sense in our, in our um, in our organization, 
Second would be I get it. I'm not quite clear if it, if it makes sense. And then three would be um, I get it. It doesn't make sense. Where, where do you feel you're at after what you've seen so far? Um, I think in terms of the presentation and all, I think that makes sense. It's just kind of um, presenting it back to, say, leadership and kind of going from there and seeing okay. what their interest level is. Okay. Um, on that front, you know, we can help you maybe in a couple of ways. Would um, you know, we're available to do a presentation with you if you wanted um, somebody to, you know, maybe if you want to set something up, we could do a you know, presentation sort of like this. Um, we can give you some takeaways. Obviously, while our, our product isn't overly difficult, sometimes it can be a little difficult to explain back to somebody because there are, you know, three or four main features to it. But um, what would be yeah. helpful in that regard? Oh, I think if just like we had talked about earlier, um, just kind of a PDF summary of the capabilities, and then I should be able to do a good job presenting that back. Okay. Okay. Um, time frame. If 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 uh, you've got a buy-in internally from the folks upstairs, um, is there? Do you normally do you have a time frame you normally deploy do new technology? Something you would look to do maybe the next quarter or um, by summer or by the end of the year? What what's your feeling on that? That would be, I'd have to check with higher level on that one. Um, I'm okay. not managing okay. the budget per se, so. Got it. Okay. Okay. So basically then to help you get uh, to advance the football, then we just need to get you some collateral and pieces that can help you present this to um, your uh, your team upstairs, and then um, we could circle back, I guess. So the question would be, when would be appropriate to circle back? Um, I think I could reach out to you guys just depending on where those conversations go. Okay. okay. I think we, I have. I think sorry. I have both of your contact information from the okay. original appointment too. Okay. Okay. So, um, well, uh, if we don't hear from you. Would it be appropriate to call you back in a week or a couple of weeks, or what? What are your thoughts? Oh, I would say maybe a couple of weeks or so. A couple of weeks. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to get you an email today, and um, we'll have some links on there and some info. And uh, if I don't hear back from you, I'll circle back to you within a couple of weeks. Okay. That would be great. So. Okay. Hey, appreciate your time very much. Yep. Thank you, guys. Sure. All right. Thanks, Matt. Have a good one. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Yep.